Hello everyone, I'm Luke from SSW. Imagine you have jumped onto a project, you have written the docs and have the project up and running. Now you need to understand what the code does. I will teach you which parts of the code you should read and how to read them. Today's topic is interfaces and abstract classes, so let's get started. This is our agenda for today. I will tell you why reading interfaces and abstract classes is important for understanding the source code, and what interfaces and abstract classes are, and when we should read them. So why are interfaces and abstract classes important? Because they are an abstraction of code. By reading them, we can know what kind of data the code needs to process, the relationship between data structures in the code, and what kind of functions a class can provide. Once you understand the data structures and the functions a class can provide, you will better understand how data is manipulated and passed it around in the rest of the application. So what exactly are interfaces and abstract classes? They provide a high level of abstraction. It allows you to define the behavior of an object without specifying how that behavior is implemented. So you can know what properties and functions a class has without going into implementation details. Next, let's see some examples of interfaces and abstract classes. Imagine we have objects of different shapes, such as circles, rectangles. Each shape can have its own color. Also, all shapes have area, and that area can be calculated. But the calculation changes depending on the type of the shape. For example, a circle calculates the area using pi and the radius. But for a rectangle, it calculates area with width and height. So we can define an interface called a shape. It declares a property called color and a method called area. The specific implementation will be inside the circle and the rectangle. So the role of the interface is to reduce coupling. For example, if you need to change how area is calculated for a rectangle, but not for a circle. You can do so without affecting how the circle behaves. It also improves scalability. Every time I add a new shape, I already have a set of well-defined methods, making it easier to add a new class. Next, let's talk about abstract classes. I will show you some example in VS Code. Imagine we have different payment methods, such as bank transfer, credit card payment. So we can define an abstract class called payment. It's similar to an interface. It defines a property called amount and a method called process payment. Process payment changes depending on the payment method. There is also a receipt method. So this method is seen for all kinds of payment method. So this can be directly implemented in the abstract class, but not in an interface. And the main purpose of abstract class is to solve the code reuse problem. If we don't use payment abstract class here, the bank transfer and the credit card payment will end up having duplicated receipt method. So let's talk about when to read interfaces and abstract classes. The right time should be after you understand the feature and you want to explore, and before you want to jump into the implementation details. For example, imagine you just jump onto an invoicing project and you are working on the invoice page and you know that it should save and print invoices. 
However, you haven't looked at how invoices are saved and printed in the code base. Before you look how it prints or saves invoices, look at how invoices class is structured via interfaces and abstract classes. Finally, let's wrap this up. In this video, I explain to you why interfaces and abstract classes are essential in reading source code and what are interfaces and abstract classes and why we should read them. We have an awesome rule about this topic. You can check this rule by clicking the link below. I'm Luke from SSW. See you in the next episode.